In today's tutorial, I'm going to be using these edible artist oil paints that were made by Karen Portaleo. I'm gonna try these out. And so I just did this simple character cake. So cute. Basically, I, I chose to start with a simple cake because I'm still learning how to use these paints, but also because when I'm painting something more complicated, it's really hard for me to concentrate on what I should be telling you to do. So uh, I might be doing a tutorial next week. Tutorial, I say, because I'm not going to probably going to be spending a lot of time telling you exactly what to do, but maybe just filming the process of painting something maybe a little more complicated using these paints. That way I can just focus on painting. But it was good to do something simple because I did learn a few things. Like for instance, I don't know if you'll be able to tell in the video, but on the little cookie, I put a stronger shadow, but as it sat overnight, the colors sort of blended into each other. So I lost the darker shadow. So I think now I know you sort of have to push the color a little further in some instances, uh, cause it kind of did happen on this, this minty blue also. So, and I think that's because I diluted a lot with the um, diluter that I bought when I bought this. So I think a lot of you actually went out and got this. So, so far so good. And I am pretty sure I'm going to turn this little drawing that I did into a sticker that I'm going to add into my Etsy shop along with some of these t-shirts that I've been designing. So if you want to check that out, it's at Kyung's Cakes and Crafts in Etsy. And time for the tutorial. And I've just made a cute little drawing of some characters and I'm going to cut around the edge to make my template for my cake painting. All right, so I cut out around the outline and of course I had to cut their little arms off because they're too thin, but they'll be easy enough to freehand later. So first things first, I'm just gonna put a little paint on the palette of colors I think I may use. I don't know if you can hear some chatter in the background. That is James working from home. Maybe you can, maybe you can't. I don't know. So what I found is you don't need that much paint, but I did use quite a bit of this diluter. That's when I was painting on buttercream. So this is actually my first time painting on fondant with this. So it might be a little different, but I'm just gonna start by squeezing a little bit on my colors. And then I might put some in a well later. How many of you out there are working with a, a partner from home together 24 seven? It's a good thing I like him. All right, I got a little vegetable shortening here. I'm just gonna put just a little on the back of my cut out. That's just gonna help me hold it in place on my cake. Pick a front. Actually, it'll be good to put it on all the ends that need to be held down. You could also use the pencil transfer method if you like. I'll post the link. I use that method in my um, painting script made easy tutorial. I don't wanna go through all that trouble for something like this when all I basically need is the outline, but if you feel more comfortable having the entire thing, the entire drawing transferred on, go ahead and watch that video. So for this, I'm just gonna hold it in place and paint a outline around. So I'm just dipping it in my diluted section over here, not going straight into the color. And I have a thin liner brush. I'll put a link to a script liner brush in the description below. And I'm just gonna do a really quick rough outline, very light. So basically that's all you need because it's pretty easy to connect the lines once you have your little reference to reference and you know it definitely does not have to be perfect the most important thing is that you go in with the color pretty light so I'm just gonna fill in the details okay so you got it roughly drawn in there the black is pretty blue when it's diluted just a little fun fact for you Keep in mind, so watercolor wise, you might have to do a little color mixing to get it not to be so blue looking when you are trying to do a sort of wash watercolor style. Okay, so down on my palette over here, I'm gonna mix up a little bit of a minty green. So taking some blue, green, and white. And I'll probably lose some of my lines and that's okay. And then I'm gonna come 
I'm gonna mix some pink with a different brush just because I wanna make sure I'm not gonna get any of that mint into my pink. I want the colors to be pretty crisp. The pink less diluted, so it's a little more opaque. So you're just gonna wanna play around with how you like your colors. And again, I'm using this Princeton Round, it's an eight. And you can see it's a pretty fat brush, but it comes to a good point. So I'm able to get around these little details. I'll also put a link to a set of these in my description. I went outside the lines a little more than I wanted to down here. They clean up pretty easily with water. I'm sure I could use vodka too. Now I'm just mixing up a little bit of yellow with a tiny bit of brown and then some white. And I'm just going to add some white up into the top of the piping bag since the fondant is sort of an off-white. I didn't dilute the white. And I'm going to come in and paint the banner white too. So I have diluted the paint a little tiny bit for this just because I want it to flow a little easier. You don't have to get it perfectly around the letters because you're going to go back over that. I'm just really quickly sort of adding white in between the lines. Okay, so now we're just gonna come in with a little bit of highlights and shadows, really simple. So pick a place where you want your light source to be. So I want my light to come from this direction. So everywhere it hits there on this side of my items, there's going to be a little lightness. Now this is a cartoon sort of drawing, so we're not going for realistic highlights and shadows or anything. So this side, very simple. And then for your shadow, I'm just gonna go in for a little bit of a darker color. And you're just, I'm just gonna go in the opposite, so. And you can blend it out a little bit if you want to. And I want to make a few little shadows on the banner and maybe up in the top of the piping bag. But since I'm finding that the black runs a little blue to neutralize that, you're going to want to add a little orange, which is opposite on the color wheel. Um, so you just take the black paint down here and then I just picked up a little bit of yellow, a little bit of red, mix that all in. And I, just, I don't know if you can see it, but let's see. So this is it once I added a little bit of the yellow and red and you can play around with that more and change the color of the gray. Whereas like this color right here is just the black by itself. Color theory guys, I did learn something in college. Okay, so I'm just going to add a little bit of shadow on the little folds of the banner. Just wipe down on my rag to get some of the color off so then I can blend it. Okay, so then I'm gonna come back down to my palette and I'm gonna dip more into the straight black and yellow and red to make a more of an opaque black or dark gray. I'm using my liner brush and then I'm just going to outline it. One of the most important things to remember when you are doing an outline like this is to have your hand resting somewhere. So my hand is resting on my cake stand over here and that is just to steady my hand. And also I sort of take it into kind of short segments. So I'm not trying to do one whole long line necessarily. Because once my hand gets to there, I'm going to have to lift up and move this. Re-steady my hand. So 
But the reason why I love these liner brushes so much is because of the long bristles means they hold a lot of pigment so you don't have to keep dipping back so often. Also, whenever I'm painting outlines, I like there to be a, a variety of a little bit of line thickness, darkness, lightness. I think it just looks, um, I don't know, having a variety of line quality sort of makes your painting look a little more interesting, I think. And sometimes I like to have it to where it's not a solid line, especially when it's like a line on the inside of a drawing. Um, like this is more of a solid outline, but the flood doesn't need to be 100% outline. I like to break it up. My tip for painting things, round little letters, because those can be the tricky ones, is I sort of paint the curve and then I paint one side and then go in and paint the other side. Because if you try to just go all around like that, you're gonna mess it up for sure, or at least I will mess it up for sure. <laughs> And then another tip I have for lettering is you don't have to paint the letters in the way that you would write the letters. So when I would typically write a T, I would go this way and then down, but it's hard for me to drag my paintbrush down and get a clean line. It's much easier for me to just sort of move my paintbrush up because uh, the way my wrists move. So that's what I'm doing. I'm not just trying to write like I would write with a pen or pencil. And oftentimes when you're painting really thin letters, you sort of have to break it down. You can't do continuous letters or one continual line. So like I'm going up this way and then I'm coming back around this way for the L and then I'm going up this way to meet it when I get to that point and then I'm stopping and I'm curving back around this way. So I break down each letter into little segments. Now we just get to put in the faces. Oh, and we have to draw on the arms too. All right, so basically our little guys are done. So cute. I would be very happy to receive this cake, but to make it just a little more fun, I'm going to add little sprinkles. Paint little sprinkles all around. 